Well, that was f***ing dreadful. <laughs> you say about that awful absolutely awful from a blades perspective i'm sure it were a great game for the neutral absolutely fantastic end-to-end -end stuff particularly second half when they you call them the underdog very loosely don't you because they've had shed loads of money pumped into them let's be right it's it's a league one league two to hour on a podcast with with some Rex and fans previewing game and they were. Bit, I asked them, where do you think your level is? Do you think you're a, a strong League 2 team in terms of your squad depth? And they were saying, we're a good League 1 team. I'd had some fans commenting that they're a, a championship level team, but when you think about the momentum that they're on, um, the confidence that breeds, the underdog mentality that they are familiar with um, at the moment due to their status in the league, they're obviously on course for promotion. They're coming and they're, they're using that fantastic momentum of success that they've got currently domestically in the league and then tying it up with underdog status in the cup. And it's it's a perfect marriage, really, for threatening anybody, any any side that comes and visits them. It's a, a classic setup for a cup shock. And it nearly was. And it, if we're right, it probably should have been. I think the sending off were dubious, but I think we were really below par. Oh, Basham looked really poor, really poor. Um, I know he's out of position at left centre half, but it, you know it's it's rare that I prefer I'd prefer to see Jack Robinson on for Bash. I never thought I'd say it out loud. To be fair, and he just has them games every now and again. Does Bash where he looks very shaky, and this one of them tonight. Ben Osborne, we know he's not a left wing back, and and I wanted him to start there because I don't want to be risking our stronger. Players in terms of, I didn't want Max Low on. Um, Bogle, who was the one that I didn't want to play, but I think we had to because he's one of our star men at minute. I thought he was woeful tonight. Really poor. Really, really poor from Jaden Bogle. It was just a disaster. I thought Anel was poor. You know, and I don't say that lightly. I think he's one of our better players. But if this doesn't line up with a suggestion that I've made several times before, that we play to the level of opposition in front of us and it's it's an awful trait we've sort of dropped our our levels i know it's not a conscious thing clearly because you wouldn't do it otherwise but i just think it's so frustrating so frustrating and to be honest I, i'm not a cup man this year you know i've, I've made that fa fairly clear i think it's all about promotion this season um we need that for the security of the club going forward that I would have rather gone out of the cup tonight, and I know how much it means to some supporters, but I'd rather have gone out than had a replay because, yes, it stacks the odds in our favour at Bramall Lane, but it's another game on the calendar and on the legs. And now you've got the dilemma of, do we really want to be putting our stronger names in when it's tighter turnarounds to league games? I certainly don't. You know, they, it, if you flip it, they lost two centre-halves in the first 10 minutes tonight. So... They'll be thinking at back of their mind, yeah, it's a... Well, they'll probably be disappointed, but in, in the grand scheme of things, it's a great result to draw with us and get a replay back at our place. But what impact will that on, have on their league form by losing their two centre-halves? And we're at risk of doing exactly the same thing. We've lost Jebison now for three games. I know he's not the main man, but he's been playing and he's been scoring. So, yeah, it's just... It's a concern for me in terms of what we're going to do now in replay. I think... It certainly won't be as tight as Tuesday, I wouldn't have thought, but the Birmingham Blackburn replays this Tuesday on 31st, so it'll be scheduled in quickly. It might even be as, as quick a turnaround as Wednesday, but we'll see. We'll have to see when it, when they line it up for. Let's hope it's pushed further back, but they can't, they can't do that because rounds have got to come and be played, haven't they? So it'll be fifth round soon. They're drawing it on Monday night, tomorrow night as I, as I record this. So, yeah, concerning tonight. weren't weren't pleased with performance at all. I think you know we've we've avoided a giant killing, but by the absolute skin of our teeth, some of the main men had to come in, come up for us. McBurney, who scored, did okay, and then I thought really tailed off. But obviously he's on a, his way back to fitness. Norwood, who we rely on way more often than than some people would want to admit. And John Egan, who's, you know, found a bit of a scoring touch. I don't know whether he thought we were playing for Ireland tonight or what, but 
Um, yeah, came up at last minute with, with equaliser. So, you know, we still in cup. That's the positives. I'm trying to be balanced. Remember, I, I keep trying to tell myself I've got to be more, more balanced. Not necessarily more positive because I've got to stay true to myself. But yeah, so that's that's my thoughts. I don't know what else people would expect me to say tonight after that. Um, but the news before kickoff was, I mean, we we ended up with eight subs on the bench, and obviously you're allowed nine. The only explanation is it has to be linked to the news that came out before kickoff, a, couple, a few hours before kickoff. So obviously the team, will, the squad of 18 will have travelled down to Wales with Brewster, our main cheerleader at the moment. Obviously not fit enough to be on bench. Um, but the news was that Sander Berger has been subject to a £20 million plus add-ons bid. Um, interesting, very interesting. So today's spotlight is obviously on Sander Berger. <laughs> Twenty million plus add-ons. That's that's my first part of call. My, my question, really, I suppose, is: Is it a good deal? Would would you sell him for that? Would you only sell him if we get a replacement? I think here's my take, and I, it probably won't surprise you. I think he's a fantastic player. I think the, his quality is there for all to see. I think he'll be better for us in the Premier League if we were to get there. I'm on record as saying that. I don't think championship suits him. I think he sometimes gets a little bit overwhelmed and, and sometimes goes missing in games. His absolute quality when he's fully fit and on his game, but that's probably once every five games for us. And I'm not saying it don't come in clusters of like two or three games, but that'll be over like a 15-game stretch. So we know what he can do, which makes, makes him so frustrating to watch when he's carelessly giving away possession or, you know things that a player of his calibre and that's what it is it's not you know stature or anything like that it's, it's talent he's got pure quality but it's so inconsistent can we afford to carry a player like that at the moment when we, we let's think of the bigger picture here we're in a transfer embargo because we can't pay um, we've missed the transfer payment so I get it's between ownership and I'm not overly concerned in terms of I think it'll get paid and I think it's purely down to the ownership issue that we're under an embargo because current owner and new owner, prospective owner, don't know who's going to be taking the reins, so who makes the payment? That's what I think it's, and I may be wrong. So selling a player would plug that gap. They'd both have to agree that it's the right way forward, current owner and prospective new owner. It would plug a gap in terms of paying the transfer fee towards, obviously lifting the embargo, hopefully. We've got time then. You saw with, uh, in the summer that Coney, who's now at Watford, was lined up to replace Sander and we, all we had to do was push go on that deal and he were our player if Sander were to go at the last minute. So we're quite, we've been quite sensible in how we've approached these things. The latest from Alan Nixon is that if Sander Berger is to leave, we're lining up a move for Lewis O'Brien. At Forest, obviously previously of Huddersfield, Heavily linked to a loan move to West Brom at the moment. Fantastic. Sign me up. If that's what we get, I think personally, that's best case scenario for us now. My Sander thoughts are, if it's anywhere near 20 million plus add-ons, snap their hand off. And that's not because I don't want Sander at our football club, I do. But we have to think of the bigger picture here. And it's about spreading the risk. And let me explain that a little bit. Because... At the moment, it is promotion or bust. If we don't get promoted this season and it's looking, you know, we're in a really strong position and losing Sander makes it slightly more difficult. We can't get away from that fact because he plays most of our games when he's fit and even when he's out of form, Eki wants to try and play him back into form. He's, he's in the starting 11 whenever he can be. And, and I'm not dismissing his contribution either because he, he can be very strong. But let's, let's think about it sensibly. We're in a financial hole. He's got 12 months... Uh, in the summer, he'll have 12 months to run on his contract. How much will he be worth then? I know if he were in three, four years with a contract, he'll hold his value at 20 million. 
I'm not sure how he's kept that value on his current form, if I'm honest, but that's what they're willing to pay, so that's what we go with. So, there were rumours that in the summer, people like AC Milan, who were quoted with an interest, Roma, potentially Chelsea, were looking at around 12 million. And if we're not going to, if he's not going to sign up for a new contract with us, even if we're promoted, then we're going to be selling at a huge loss in the summer for 12 million. So why not sell now when his price is at his peak? If, if, if we're going to get 20 million, and there's rumours also that Newcastle are having a sniff around him as well. So if that results in a bidding war, I think his release clause is between... I read today, and I've gone back and forth on this. We signed him for 22. I'm more or less certain on that. His release clause were initially 35 million. I've read today that it got reduced on relegation to 25. If we get 25 million, or 20 with add-ons up to 25, you've got to snap that hand off because it's the peak of his value. And if the worst happens, which could happen with Sandra or without, and we do collapse, and we do miss out on promotion this year, then we've banked a huge sum for a player at his, at his peak that we wouldn't have got. Even in the Premier League, yes, we get all the Premier League money and there's always counter-arguments to everything I'm saying here, and, but it's just my opinion. I think if that's the sort of money on the table, we have to take it because it spreads the risk of the long-term future of the football club. So, the, the thought as well of Lewis O'Brien potentially coming in, I don't want to get too, too far down that rabbit hole, but again, as rumours come in, I want to be talking to you and letting you know about it, just to see what you think, because it's current and it's just coming in now. It came in as I was recording. Um, so, from Alan Nixon, as I say, which some people really rate and some people think he talks a lot of rubbish. So, again, you'll make your own opinion, but I'm really interested to hear what you want to say about this, because it'll split split opinion. Some will think it's a lack of ambition. Some will, some will compare it to Dean and Fjortov leaving. I think, I think we're way off with that. I think Ndai is much more pivotal to Anne Norwood, which I've mentioned before, but obviously, thankfully, there doesn't appear to be much interest in Norwood, although he's out of contract at the end of the season. That's another topic for another day, which I'll revisit. But Ndai is the one. Ndai is the irreplaceable gem. He's the jewel in our crown that we had to bring on tonight to try and get some at non-league Wrexham, which, you know in itself is embarrassing, but we've done that. We've put them to bed for now <laughs> until replay. We've put the subject to bed <laughs> while, I'm, while I'm on Wrexham. How did I not mention Adam Davis? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So he's out of contract at the end of the year. Thanks for your service. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Anyway, so I'm leaving it there. What I want to say uh, also is, again, I'm really grateful and I'm really appreciative. I don't... I'm saying the same thing every time, but it genuinely, I'm just a lad that talks a lot of rubbish to his phone um, and, and just spouts about Chef United. I've recently been in touch with um, Nick from Chef United Way, who I, I'm fed up of praising on this channel, to be fair, but he has been absolutely superb in terms of welcoming me and, and sort of helping me. So he's, he's reached out and we're going to be doing, hopefully, a, a few videos on his channel which might get a few more eyes on mine. Um, fingers crossed, you know, I add a little bit of something to his channel as well and it's not just a completely one-way <laughs> one stream and, and only benefits me. Let's hope you enjoy some of the stuff we're, we're going to be talking about. Um, so, yeah, check us out on Chef United Week. I know everybody that watches this will likely watch that as well. So, um, so yeah, it's... it's Hopefully, if I get a bump like and it continues the trajectory that we're on... Um, and we can add more ramblers, if you like, then we can, um, for the last time, potentially. <laughs> Knock on the door to 400. So I'm at around 383 at a minute, I think, at time of recording. Hopefully we can get another 17 before I, I chuck my next one on. And then we'll, we'll be doing something else to get to the next milestone. So let me know what you think about everything we talked about today. It's, um, it's a bit of a, 
a stinker and I hope it don't affect people. I know when I, when we, <laughs> I, the, one of the reasons I got into this in terms of uh, just YouTubing, because I loved, loved the fan channels, particularly for United, obviously, but I, I just wanted to consume a load of content, but only really when it were going well. If we'd had a bad result, like we have tonight, I didn't really want to watch much. So I'm hoping I can break that trend and you'll still watch because I've, I've thrown in a, a really interesting subject as well with Sander because I'm, I'm really keen to see what people think. And if I'm on right track with majority or whether I'm on my own or, or in the minority with me being okay if he goes, if we get the right price, let me know what you think. Thanks again for the support. Well, let's keep us chin up. We're still on a fantastic run. Another unbeaten tonight if you're trying to put a positive spin on it. And as always, up the blades. Thank <laughs> you.